I love this Sunday. This is such a great Sunday. We're kind of, we got great music. We're flying by the seat of our pants with the bulletin. It's great. <laughs> we're, just, we're just doing it. We're doing it. This is great. I'm so glad you guys are here. And I really hope that you can stick around after the worship service today for, you know why you're, you know why you're here, really, right? For the Halloween party afterwards downstairs, um, which is looking good down there. I hope you can stick around for that. I'm glad you're here, and I'm glad, I'm so excited about Halloween uh, tomorrow. You can't, some of you came in costumes. I love the costumes. I love, it's just great. It's just a fun time of year. And, uh, you know, when I was growing up, my favorite costume was a pirate costume, I was, but it wasn't as nice as that. <laughs> I was from, it was from the, the department store, and uh, it had the plastic mask thing that was around my thing. And I loved it so much, I wore it every year. I wore it every year. And I got bigger. And the costume didn't get bigger. But I didn't care. I don't care. I was out there wearing this costume that was way too small for me. Uh, and I kept going with it. But you know, one of the costumes that I thought would be the, what a really neat thing to wear on Halloween would be if you could actually be invisible. Wouldn't that be an awesome costume to be go around and I thought that until I realized that then I wouldn't get any candy. Because who's going to give an How do you give candy to an invisible person, right? They'll probably. But have you ever felt that way? Have you ever felt invisible? Maybe you're like walking through a crowd and you get bumped around because it's just like you're not there. People don't notice you or see you. Or, or maybe you're in class and you raise your hand and the teacher doesn't call on you. It's like you're not even there. Nobody, nobody seems to notice you. Or maybe you want to feel invisible because maybe you did something that's really embarrassing. Really embarrassing. You just sort of want to melt away. You don't want to, you don't want to be here anymore. You just want to be invisible. But if you ever have felt that way in your life, and all of us kind of have at one time or another, felt like nobody sees us, nobody notices us, or we just want to not be there. If you've ever felt that way, know this. God always sees you. God always sees you, and God always loves you. No matter what, who you are, what you've done, it does not matter. God always sees you. God wants to um, know what you think. God wants to know how you feel. God will always see you, and God will always love you, no matter what. Even if you're feeling invisible, God sees you. I hope that you have a great Halloween today at the party afterwards, and you have a great and safe Halloween tomorrow as well. Thanks for helping to make this a special Sunday for us here at First Congregational, and you can head off to your classes. And just to highlight a few announcements this morning, uh, probably pretty obvious at this point that there's a Halloween party uh, after the worship service today in the basement of the church. Uh, if you've never been down there, there's a basement to this church. Um, and you can get to it by way of the hallway uh, next to the uh, kitchen. And there's a stairway that leads down uh, to down to the dungeon of, of the church uh, where the Halloween party is. Uh, so uh, please join us down there. Uh, grab a cup of coffee from Coffee Hour and head on down. Uh, if you have a child who's going to be joining with that, it'd be great if you could go down uh, to be with them uh, so we have enough adults down there. Uh, but it's not just kids uh, who are welcome. All adults are welcome to go down to it and kind of catch, catch the spirit of uh, this time of year. Special thanks again to the middle school and high school youth of our church who are organizing that for the younger kids. And uh, to Darby and Teresa, our youth uh, uh, deacons, uh, for helping uh, to spearhead this effort. And Gary and Lori, who were here yesterday, uh, helping to set up uh, what looks like a fantastic area down in the basement. So do check that out. Also, after worship today, there's other stuff to check out in the Narthex. Uh, that is uh, sign-ups for uh, the Christmas fair. Uh, there's, uh, uh, we had a great meeting after worship uh, last Sunday. Uh, to help organize this. It's coming up uh, first uh, weekend in December, so we want to get wheels under this now. Um, so there's more information about how you can help out with that in the Narthex. Also about Thanksgiving Sunday coming up uh, also in the Narthex. This coming week, um, 
Saturday, next Saturday, before next Sunday, change your clock. Don't forget to change your clock. Fall back. Fall back. Right, do that, because um, that'll help you get to church on time the next morning. I don't know if you'd be late or early. If you didn't do that, I can never keep that straight. But fall back next Saturday night. Um, also, next Sunday is Communion Sunday here at uh, our First Congregational Church, first Sunday of the month. So we hope you'll join us back here for that. Uh, and you'll also get to hear a little bit more about what's coming up for Thanksgiving Sunday as well. Uh, in the uh, Narthex after worship today as well, um, uh, Richard Federico, who is our lay reader today and our deacon of finance, will be at his table yet again uh, as we progress through this stewardship uh, uh, campaign for this fall here at our church. He'll be there with information about uh, giving to First Congregational Church. Among the things at his table, along with, by the way, those big balloons that say um, uh, inflation donation on them, which I think is a great theme for this year. Uh, we're asking folks to, who, are, who are pledging uh, to give in 2023 um, one additional month of pledging. Uh, instead of 12 months of pledging, 13 months of pledging. If everybody did that, we would be in some pretty good shape uh, with the budget for 2023. So consider that if you would. But on his table, you'll find these pledge cards. And we're asking everybody to fill one out. Uh, so we have a great sense of where we're at financially with the church. This is true even if you're giving by the automatic deposit to our church, uh, or if you pledge in another uh, way as well. Uh, if, you're, if you're staying the same with your pledging, increasing, any changes, fill out, if everybody could fill one out, we, we'll, that would make everybody happy, particularly Richard and Chip. We'd be very happy if everybody could do that. So visit him. Any questions? He'll be happy to help with that. Uh, and right now, as we sing the doxology, speaking of giving, uh, you're invited to consider your giving this Sunday to our church. The offering plates are at the exits to the sanctuary this morning. Um, as we seek to uplift and to reflect out uh, the light and goodness, justice, and love of Jesus Christ that we find in this place uh, to the wider community. Your offering is invited. And on this All Saints Sunday, I invite you to hear these words from the Gospel of Luke, the lectionary text for All Saints Day. Then you looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. But I say to you that listen, Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And for any, from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if, ever, if, and if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. Great advice for those of us who would like to be saints. Here ends our scripture lessons for this morning. May God add a blessing to the reading and to the hearing of these holy words. And will you pray with me? Compassionate creator, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our minds and our hearts bring us into deeper relationship with you, you who are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Well, you may have heard that we have a new men's group at our church. Uh, just started uh, this past month. They meet once a month. And when we launched our, our first uh, meeting uh, this last, uh, well, a couple weeks ago, I was reminded of the previous men's group here at the, at the church. Um, 
It was called the senior men's group um, at our church, and it was called that because, well, all well, the guys in it were pretty old. And there was me uh, that I met with them out every time. Um, and they, all the people in that group have passed on. They are among those we remember in our hearts uh, this All Saints Day. Um, and maybe because they're not here, I can tell this story. <laughs> they wouldn't mind if I did tell this story, by the way. The, men's, the men in this group, the senior men's group, uh, they were all these thoughtful, gentle men who just loved to get together and share stories with each other. And I often wondered what they were like in their younger days. Well, it was around Halloween one year that I got a glimpse of that. Because they were sitting around there talking about how Halloween isn't what it used to be. Which is what, you know, you do in those groups, right? Oh, back in our day, back in our day, we made our own fun. So I asked him, well, what kind of fun was that? And one of them says, well, we didn't go to Shaw's and buy caramel apples. We made our own caramel apples. The other one said, well, oh, that's great. The other one said, we made our own costumes, too. Didn't go to the store to buy those. We made our own costumes. Oh, that's great. The other one said, we used to go out and really scare the younger kids. I said, well, that's not exactly nice, but okay. We used to smash other people's pumpkins. I said, okay, really? Wow. And then one of them said, said this. We used to take candles and we'd, we'd rub them against the windows of people's houses so they couldn't see out. And you couldn't get it off either. I was like, Really? Okay. Wow. And it was, we used to throw rocks at cars. <laughs> All right, what? And then it was, we, we get these cans of old paint, and we throw the paint on people's front doors and we run. And I was like, are you out of your mind? <laughs> these gentle, soft-spoken men were not so gentle and soft-spoken at one time in their lives. They were Vandals, really, to be honest. I don't know if they were just pulling my leg or what, or making that up, but so much for the good old days being simpler times, I thought. But maybe Halloween brings that out of people. In fact, there are people in our faith who say, darn right, it brings it, Halloween brings that out in people, and that's why Halloween should be gotten rid of. It's pagan, it's evil, it's awful. I'll tell you right now, I am not one of those people. I, not that I condone vandalism. Let me just say that. But I do think Halloween is a great, fun holiday, especially for little kids. But to those Christians who say we shouldn't celebrate Halloween, I would say be careful. Because we Christians have a tendency to be so focused on avoiding what is bad, that we throw out some what is good at the same time. Take worship, for example. Some reformers were so worried about what might be perceived as too Catholic that they stripped the liturgy in some pretty radical ways way back then and theology of some good things that could be of help to people. Halloween is no different. Depending on who you talk to, Halloween probably falls somewhere between a harmless secular celebration over here and the devil's holiday over here. Most of us probably don't even think of it as a Christian holiday, but you know what? That's what it is. That's what it actually is. The word Halloween, as you may know, is simply a contraction of All Hallows Evening, or All Hallows Eve. The word hallowed, as in the Lord's Prayer, hallowed be thy name, means holy or consecrated. Hallow can also be used in connection with a person, a holy person, a hallowed person, or a saint. And that is where we get Halloween. Essentially, it's another word, way of saying All Saints Eve. All Saints Eve, which makes sense because the next day, November 1st, is All Saints Day. Now, All Saints Day is a day of celebrating the communion of saints. 
the community of saints, the commun uh, communion of saints, um, community made up of all past, present, and future Christians. But why have this elaborate evening uh, of celebration uh, the day before All Saints Day? Well, All Saints Day used to be a pretty significant high holy day in the church. And what do we do with major Christian holidays? We hold vigils the night before. You are way more familiar with this, with Christmas. We have a Christmas Eve worship service. And for some families, and I would even say for our church, Christmas Eve is a bigger celebration than Christmas Day itself. Easter is another example. Many churches still hold Holy Saturday Easter vigils late into the night before Easter morning. All Saints Day used to be the same thing. All Hallows Eve was the vigil before All Saints Day. All of this is a holdover from the Jewish practice of beginning days at sunset, not at midnight. All Hallows Eve, or Halloween, and All Saints Day. But it doesn't end there. There's a third holy day that jumps in right there, right after All Saints Day, and that's All Souls Day. All Souls Day on November 2nd. So what's the difference between All Saints Day and All Souls Day? Thank you for asking. Most churches uh, today conflate those two. But originally they were very different holidays. All Saints Day goes back to the early 7th century when Pope Boniface, good old Pope Boniface, I'm sure you all remember him, the fourth, uh, he consecrated the Pantheon in Rome to the Virgin Mary and all martyrs in the church, those who had died, in order, and ordered a yearly celebration to commemorate that. And he did this on May 13th. He did that on May 13th because he, it coincided with a Roman holiday that he was trying to get rid of. It was a festival in ancient Rome during which Romans attempted to exorcise ghosts of the dead from their homes. Sound familiar? hundred years later, that Roman holiday had faded away. But those pesky Celts up north they held on to another festival of the dead called Samhain. So Pope Gregory, then at the time, moved All Saints Day from May 13th to November 1st in order to compete with that. And it worked again. So all these holidays were focused around the dead. But All Saints Day isn't just about those who have died. At its heart, All Saints Day is a call to live as saints now and figure out how we're going to pass this faith on to future generations. That's what that broader umbrella of communion of saints is all about. And once All Saints Day took on that theme, honoring the dead kind of took a back seat. So All Souls Day was developed in the 11th century. This goes back a ways. All, Saint, All Souls Day was set aside exclusively for remembering the faithful departed and especially our own relatives and friends. So All Saints Day became about well-known saints, people like Matthew, John, uh, and passing on the faith, whereas All Souls Day became about our own loved ones who had died. It became a more, uh, it's a more personal holiday. But the reason most Protestants don't do a whole lot with All Souls Day is because it got wrapped up with uh, Catholic indulgences and praying for the release of souls from purgatory. And the Protestant reformers wanted nothing to do with that. They rebelled against that whole idea. And All Souls Day was largely cast aside. Or, or merged with All Saints Day. I said earlier that Greg, Greg, Pope Gregory, uh, we're that close, right? <laughs> His moving All Saints Day 
uh, to November 1st, successfully uh, eliminated this Celtic holiday of Samhain, uh, uh, of the uh, holiday of the dead. That's not exactly true, is it? Because so many of the traditions we have today around Halloween come from that ancient pagan holiday, from pumpkin carving to costumes to trick-or-treating. And the church? The church gave up that battle for Halloween and let it become a secular event and placed emphasis on All Saints Day and conflated uh, All Souls Day into that. That happened to such an extent that most people don't realize that the Halloween is a Christian Holy Day vigil. All Hallows Eve. Taken together, these three holy days, Halloween, All Saints Day, All Souls Day, are called All Hallowtide. All Hallowtide. A three-day period of celebration and remembrance. I thought that'd be helpful to know that. So to know some of the background uh, as we head into this week. Uh, and also in the spirit of why we do what we do as Christian people. But it's important to note that none of these three holy days involve throwing paint on people's front doors. Just so you know. I can't imagine. I can't imagine those guys thinking that was okay. And again, maybe they were just joking around. I hope they were. What this time of year should call to mind, though, is that we belong to a heritage of some wonderful people in our faith whom we call saints. We Protestants have a pretty broad de definition of saint, the small s. It should call to mind that we, like them, have an obligation to not only practice our faith, to make it real in our everyday lives, but also to pass that faith on to the next generation by our example. And lastly, it should call to mind our loved ones who have died and the legacy of goodness that they leave with us. All hallowtide. May it enrich your faith life this fall. Let us pray. Oh, holy God, we thank you for the fun opportunities that Halloween provides. We pray that everyone, young and old, stay safe this Halloween. Remind us too, O oh God, of the origins of this Halloween, All Saints Day and All Souls Day. Help us to be uplifted and deepened in our faith through these days of celebration and remembrance. Bless our church, O oh God, and all that we do in the name and spirit of your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. <laughs>